Basketball is heating up with big plays and even bigger wins. And we've teamed up with DraftKings to get you in on the action. DraftKings just dropped a brand new way to play daily fantasy sports with Pick 6. Right now, all new customers can make their first pick. $50 back in Pick 6 credits after playing just $5 in your first pick set. That's right. You just have to play $5 and you'll get back $50 in Pick 6 credits. Getting started is simple. Download the DraftKings Pick 6 app and sign up using code SMOKE. Track your lineup and compete against others for a shot at huge cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Pick 6 app now and sign up using promo code SMOKE. That's code SMOKE, only at DraftKings Pick 6. The crown is yours. Welcome back. All the smoke. All-Star Indiana. We back in your back in your old stomping grounds. Happy to be back here, They still man. got love for you out here? They got a lot of love for me. Jack, before we get started, I'm going to crack open this core cool, cool's light. Hey, because it's made to chill? It's early, but it's made to chill. Hey, and you know it's made to chill because the mountains on there turn blue when it's cold. Ooh, Jack, you know it's 8 o'clock in California, hey. but hey, it's never too uh, early to start. It's happy hour somewhere. Uh, what, uh, we got a good one today, Jack. I got a chance to sit down with this young man right before he came in the league. Uh, Jelani had plugged it, and I was just fascinated off the rip about his IQ and the way he approached the game. And obviously his father had a nice run in the league, but son came through and, and crushed the buildings. Yes, um, let's welcome to the show, Jaden Brunson. Appreciate all it. All-star, yeah, Jaden All Brunson. star, yes, yes sir. Right? Yes, all sir. star. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't even like to say underdog because I don't really feel like you've been, but I, I, I think at times overlooked, is that safe to say? That people kind of overlooked you and, and, and I really think you're making your mark now. Yeah, one hundred percent. I'd say um, no matter what stage of my my career, been like high school, college, league, um, always been somewhat overlooked at some point. But um, I don't really like use that. I mean, I guess I use this fuel a little bit, but like it is what it is. I know that I, got, I start at the bottom of the total pole every every time I get to a new place, and I just got to work my way back up. So career numbers. Uh, congratulations on your first All Star appearance. You had twenty seven points and six assists a game. What has been kind of the secret to your breakout season? Um, Really, it's it's a lot of the credit goes to, obviously, my teammates. Just being um, a dog. You're just a dog. That too. Bro. That too, yeah. Uh, my teammates, obviously, the Knicks organization for just believing in me and all that. Uh, I mean, obviously, you can say the work you put in and all that stuff, that's just, that's just what I do. But uh, – I got to give thanks to the people that really believed in me when I sometimes don't. And so uh, um, my whole thing is I always try to keep my confidence, but um, it's always really beneficial when I have people on the side of me who's like, this is what you do, believe in yourself, and it gives me an extra boost. A ton of accolades, but most notably two-time NCAA champ at Villanova. Somehow you still slide to the second round, um, but now you're really the darling of the NBA with with all due respect on the biggest stage you know they called master's guard garden the mecca what is it like the energy and 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 the atmosphere back in new york now that you guys are playing well no it's it's rocking mm -hmm. every single night um it's it's crazy you know going to the garden you know you, when you when you're sitting in traffic you know you're getting ready to go into the um the garden you know you start to you, you start to feel the energy you know, before anyone's even in there. You know, when you're shooting on the court before the game and no one's really in the stands yet, you, know, you can still feel that energy. So, um, New York, man, it's, you know, when the Knicks are good, you know, things are rocking in there. The NBA is better when the Knicks are no good. No question. Um, a recent... Uh, They've been often, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a recent... Uh, <laughs> stupid. A recent video surfaced, and I loved it because I'm in a similar stage with my twin boys of your pops working you out. And, yeah. and, and just how he was on you and, and, and talk to us about that dynamic of having a dad that played in the league. You obviously wanted to follow in his footsteps, but just that journey to get there. And before you start for us, you, for like for me and Jelani, like you like our son, cause we came up with your dad, you know what I'm saying? So we know him very well. So to see you shining even more, you know what I'm saying? Coming, coming out better than him and shining more than him. Like it's extra gratifying to us to see you succeed. So you got people like me and Jelani guys that came up with your dad, that's getting so much joy from seeing you shine, bro. You talking about you old ass motherfuckers? Oh, all the yeah. old motherfuckers yeah. like us. Yeah. They came in with your dad to see you shining. <laughs> bro, we, we super proud of you, dog. Nah, bro. I appreciate that. I think um, it's like going back to when uh, he used to train me when we were younger. Um, 
I think, obviously, I'm not like six eight. Now I'm not jump over people. I'm not super fast. He wasn't either. He, he definitely wasn't <laughs> either. I didn't, yeah, he definitely wasn't. He um, young when I was younger, it really you can obviously teach so much. It was like more mental than anything. Like my dad at the time when that video surfaced, uh, he was coaching at University of Virginia. So they just had a brand new facility, brand new arena, brand new practice gym. It's AC, beautiful in there. But in the hot summer, and um, he had me working outside you know, mm-hmm. at the high school gym. On the black Or the top. high school uh, black tops. And so I'm thinking, like, why are we not just going to the right. AC? Going to the AC gym. <laughs> like, we could still get the same work in, whatever. The court's actually bigger in there. The lines are probably perfect and everything. But uh, it was all mental. And he was just trying to see where I was mentally. And uh, and he pushed me and pushed me. And it, he was like, if you make a shot here, you can make a shot anywhere. So um, I think as I grew older, obviously, more skill-based workouts were implemented to what I was doing. But now that mental part of it was huge, huge for me. Because I didn't really think about it until I got older. I was like, half the stuff I'm doing now is easy. Yeah, because it's, I've been it's just, doing it. It's ingrained. Yeah. Have you ever had anybody tell you that your IQ is through the charts, your basketball IQ? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, I think they also say that I feel like to – Give me a compliment, but also say like, I, I, there's nothing else to my game. Mm-hmm. I heard that a lot, like, mm-hmm. like coming up in the draft and stuff. And people saying like, "Oh, he's good. No, he's great, smart, but, but, the right, butt. yeah." So I mean, like, I know I'm smart. I know right. I'm smart, but like, right. I know I also a lot of other shit to me yeah. too. But there's sure. so many good players that they have, have no IQ. Dumb it, you know. They they can <laughs> jump and all that, but up here they have no clue what's going on on the court. <laughs> I got a question. I want to take it back to to father son because again, I'm 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 in that situation now. What was that line of? Because I'm to the to the thought of my boys are 15 now. They just finished their freshman year, first season of varsity, of you wanting it, but your dad pushing you. How, how was that dynamic when you were younger? Was it hey, let's go get this work, <clears throat> or you were someone that's dad, let's go get this work? How did that work? A little bit of both. Okay, I would say definitely there would be days where it was like unspoken, like we knew that like. I got to the point where I was in like in freshman, my freshman year, I was like, all right, I gotta get my schoolwork done. I gotta go to the gym, and then I can do what I want. Like it wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna go hang on my fir- friends for a little bit, then I'm gonna meet you at the gym later. It was like, no, priorities. You gotta, yeah, you gotta prioritize. My parents said I got there's school, there's basketball, and there's your social life. You gotta pick two of the three. Mm-hmm. And then um, obviously I picked basketball and school, and then the social life. Uh, is it'll always be there. Like my best friends, still my best friends to this day because they helped me. They knew I was like, yo, that's Jalen's gonna do that, and he's gonna meet up with us later. And so, um, they they gave, they gave me some choices. It was never like this is what you got to do. Mm-hmm. They always like here are the pros and cons. Do with it as you please. Mm-hmm. And we'll support you wherever. Yeah. yeah, they'll support me. But like when I'm when I start complaining about me not playing well or me not doing something well in school, they're it's like, your well, fault. it's your fault. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Own up to it. Born in Jersey, you moved seven times because of your dad's job. What was that like? Honestly, hell. <laughs> hell. Around. Yeah. But it helped. I would say hell because obviously you're moving, like I said, seven times before school or before college. Like you're moving to different schools. You got to meet, meet uh, new friends. Um, you got to find new teams to wherever you're going to. It got to the point where I kind of quit every other sport. Like I played football baseball, soccer, and um, basically I just like, you know, let me just play basketball year round. It's the easiest thing to do. I think it helped me because I had to adapt to every situation I was in. Mm-hmm. And so when I got to school, like uh, high school, college, like the, the, kid, uh, the kids, like my older teammate, I was young, I was, I was a freshman playing varsity, so mm-hmm. it helped me adapt to that, helped me adapt to college and, uh, and the league. So like moving all those times sucked, but it helped. Well, that's tough too as a young kid because friends are everything. Like when you're little, like your friends are everything to you. So, so to be bouncing around to different schools and different states, like I said, I can see how it can build character and toughness. But at the same time, as a child, you're like, damn, like I'm leaving my friends again. Yeah, it was, it was, it was not fun. I'm not gonna lie to you, but uh, it made me tough. Yeah, I mean, I had to go through it. It wasn't like I had a choice either. Right <laughs> around that time, you weren't understanding it was your dad's journey, like what he was, where he was trying to go. As a kid, you don't understand that. You just bouncing around, leaving your friends, just frustrated. But now, as being a Same NBA job. player that's mm-hmm. been on different teams, you know what I'm saying? You kind of understand that now. But as a kid growing up in the NBA, any funny stories or good stories you remember from being around different teams? I remember, obviously, with like the 
don't really remember, but when I was with the Knicks, when my dad was with the Knicks, um, I used to, uh, I forget what game it was, I think it was against the Heat, when Allen Houston caught the ball top of the key, did all those jab steps, hit a clutch shot at the top of the key. So I used to always do that jab step like in the locker room and then they all laugh and stuff like that. Um, we used to run around and do like the LJ sign. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's dope. Something came, I did a I did Fallon last week and we talked about the Jordan story. Yeah, what I, I saw the headline. <laughs> what, what what is that story? I didn't hear the story. Long story short, we lived in Jersey for long, or most of my dad's career. We lived in Jersey, um, so we go to all the East Coast cities wherever is drivable for us. And so he came to DC. Jordan was with the Wizards, and so every away arena, I got like that home team's jersey. Just something that me and my mom did, and um, had Jordan's jersey on. So after the game. I got to go see my dad in the locker room, went to the other locker room with one of their coaches, and I uh, met Michael. And um, he's like, oh, you want me to sign your jersey? I said, no, nah, you messed it up. <laughs> I was dead serious. How old were you? I was, he was like 02, 03, so probably like six or seven. He said, yeah. no, nah, you'll mess so, it like, up. So I'm, like, I'm growing up in the NBA. Like, I'm right. seeing all these players like all the time. So I'm like, it's, I'm taking it for granted. Like, I'm right. like, it is what it is. But I was like, I had no signatures, like nothing. Wow. And my dad used to collect stuff. But I was like, I don't really, I don't need signatures. I'm, I'm good. So I was like, yeah, don't mess my jersey no, up, MJ. Mess it up. <laughs> That's crazy. You, know? you already know I'm locked into the NBA schedule and what games are coming up. But sometimes when there's great concerts in town, I don't realize it until it's almost too late. So when it comes to grabbing last minute tickets, game time always has my back. From sports to concerts, game time is the fastest way to buy your tickets for all the events near you with last minute deals and their best price guaranteed. That's right, Stack. Game Time is the only ticketed app that gives you total peace of mind when making your purchase. And you can even see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly where you're at. And with Zone Deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for big savings. The Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code SMOKE for $20 off your first purchase. That's code SMOKE for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. Hold on to your kilts. Peacock Original Series, Traders, is back for a new season with strategy, betrayal, and sabotage. This time, an all celebrity cast that Vulture has held us as reality royalty returns to Scottish Castle for the ultimate murder mystery competition. With the big cash prize on the line, there's no telling how cutthroat these missions will get or what host Alan Cumming will pull out of his brilliant and citric wardrobe. The traders are streaming now with new episodes Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on Peacock. How good was Jabari Parker in high school? Throwback, man. Yo. <laughs> Jabari, we played him my sophomore year of high school in the state championship. So I think our tallest dude my sophomore year was about 6'5. And so we ran off like 19 straight wins. All of a sudden, we were just, we got hot. You know, we went down state and we we're playing Jabari. They just won three out of, it was a senior year. So they won the last three state championships. So I'm like, yo, we got all the confidence in the world. And then we have a huge high school. We had like 4,500 kids. So like our student section was packed, it was loud. Jabari just made it look too easy, man. <laughs> killed. <laughs> just killed us. It was like the most effortless 20 points. Like effortless. Like in every bucket was just like, <laughs> man, Jabari was different. I different. hate he got hurt, bro, because he was nice. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he was he was different. And he was a good dude. Now he worked hard. Um didn't really say anything on the court. Ne mm -hmm. Never, but like I was just, man, he was different. Though. I feel like he has some mellow in him. Like a strong, versatile dog that'll dunk on you. Big body with the but he was athletic. With a little head. He can fly. Yeah, yeah uh, he can get up to. Jabari was nice. He's just one of those dudes that like is like a nice guy. Like he doesn't say too much. Yeah. But on the court, you're just he like, means. who is this dude? Like, this is a wholly different person. He's a, he's just an animal. Jaleel Okafor. Another one. <laughs> Another one, huh? Another one. My junior year, the next year, we played Jaleel in the state state semifinals. State semifinals. And so I had, I think I had 56 of like the 68 points. God damn. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my friends, they always give me shit for not passing the ball that game, whatever. I was I was doing whatever could could to win. But Jalil just, he was like 13 of 15, just like, just dunking everything, whatever. I'm just like, 
we, I just can't catch a break. That's two years in a row we playing at number one, <laughs> number one, recor- number one <laughs> recruits, and these dudes are just killing us. But uh, yeah, there's another one who's just dominant. Tough. Yeah, dominant. How lit were you right here? Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> How oh, lit were man. you right here? So <laughs> I'll say this: this is this is um that that game. Against Jaleel. Oh, was it this really? Game against Jaleel. Game against Jaleel. So it's downstate. We're fighting. It's like a close game. It was like a two possession game at the time. Oh, we were down. Yeah, we we're down four with like thirty seconds left. So I come down. I, I like get fouled and I shoot a three and I make it. So I turn around. I, I like I start putting like my hands in the air, like saying count it, count it. And the refs like waving it off. Like no, 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 no. So I just turn around and I scream. Like, I was like, what the fuck? I screamed it. <laughs> like I had my hands in the air and everything. Like it, like. But the crazy part is, like, everyone sees that, but, like, I kind of face the other student section. I face, like, the other – it was Whitney Young. Face, like, their coaching uh, – their bench or whatever. Like, no one said anything. Didn't get a tech. And nothing. I didn't even realize that that happened. I was just, like – In the moment. I was in the moment. Yeah. So, after the game, that picture, like, resurfaces – or surfaces, and I'm – Oh, I did, like that has to be photoshopped. Like, I, I don't I, remember I, that. I, I didn't do that. It has to be photoshopped. <laughs> so then, like our AD from the school knocks on my door. So yo, you're suspended for the third place game next tomorrow. Oh really? So I was like, I said, like, I, I swear I didn't do it. Like I like I had no idea that was, like that was even a thing. I had yeah. had to be doctored because the dude who took the picture didn't post it with um people the, in the background. Whatever. No, no, no. With the um. With this company or his newspaper, he posted oh, okay. on his personal. Oh, okay. On his personal Twitter, so I'm like, well, why wouldn't he post it regularly if it was a real picture? So there was a whole thing, and my team was going to sit out like the whole third place game because they thought like the picture was like doctor and everything, which I still to this day like I didn't do that in my mind. I was like, there's no oh, way. Mm-hmm. I don't remember that. You can see the ref blowing up, blowing up, like there, no shot. So they did, they didn't count it. So when that picture, so when the. People from the Mavs, like the training staff, found that picture. <laughs> they like they got like little like fat head stickers of it and put it everywhere in the practice facility <laughs> for me to see. That's now funny. that I look at it, it looked like the, the left finger is doctored a little bit. A little bit. It looked like it. A little bit. Mm-hmm. College, freshman. You get a chance to start and win a national championship. We were talking about before we got started. I mean, obviously, the league is the ultimate goal and the prize, but I had a blast in college. Mm-hmm. Um, Me too. Talk to us about <laughs> where'd you go to college at? Uh, you, uh, uh, the DR? No, uh, Backyard University. <laughs> <laughs> the streets are hard not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as a freshman starting, getting a chance to win a national championship uh, at Villanova. Talk to us about that experience. It was that, that year was fun. I, and I say it was fun because it was. It was ups, ups and downs. Like as a freshman, nah, I was an All American, and so, like I'm thinking, like right, I'm gonna go, like I'm gonna do my thing, and like I know obviously when I got to Villanova, it was like it was team oriented. Uh, those dudes were, we had a bunch of older dudes, but I knew I had a chance to come in and compete to start and everything. So, Coach Wright didn't give me anything. I knew I was gonna have to compete for everything, but um, Coach Wright's another one who like. Everything was mental. Like your mental approach is everything. And so, uh, like he would come into practice some days and try and like break you and see where you were. Like that was his goal, to see where we were as a team. And uh, with me, I just I could not let that happen in my three years. I was like, this man will never be able to do Ooh. that, do that. But um, man, we we fought, man. We fought like hell. We had like little things going on, not throughout the season. But the one thing I realized that our practices were way harder than our games. Mm-hmm. We're way harder. So when we got the game time, we're thinking, all right, these these Easy. dudes aren't playing as hard as us. Like, mm-hmm. like they may be more talented, but they're not going to outdog us. Mm-hmm. So that's how. I mean, we obviously had different terminology and stuff like that, but that was basically what we did. And so Coach Wright had that mentality for us, and it was it was fun because we just knew that other dudes weren't going to just do right. the little things that we were going to do. Mm-hmm. So um, if we made shots, we we were winning. But if, if things weren't going well for us, but all right, it's time to time to toughen up and he he implemented implemented that into our minds and then obviously yeah we mm-hmm. found a way it is is it around the squad like i know he's married but he's a ladies man like the ladies love him like you, you know who love coach right hmm. eleanor oh does she bro she <laughs> called me and asked me do i know him really i'm like nah i don't know i was just looking at a picture of him like but he's she's not but she's not the first one i've had other older ladies from when i'm working somewhere talk about him 
So like you GQJ. must be a ladies man or something. GQJ. GQJ. See everyone. <laughs> everyone sees. Oh, you're not gonna like this. Everyone sees that like Jay Wright when he walks into practice sometimes and he's like his hair is a little messed up and he he got that scowl on his face. His, his first name is Gerald. Gerald. Gerald Wright. So he's like, all right. Everyone else sees Jay Wright, but we see Gerald Wright. Yeah. You, know, you don't, you don't <laughs> yeah. want to see Gerald Wright. Yeah. yeah. Gerald's on some shit. <laughs> yeah. How did you learn how to play off two feet? Was that at Villanova that come earlier? Very skilled off two feet. I learned a little. I learned it with, obviously, working with my dad. But I think at Villanova, it was like. Polished it? Polished. Polished it because everyone did it. It was something we did every single day. I like, kid you not. That's how we started practice. That's how we ended practice. Like mm-hmm. that, we started just doing our footwork stuff. And so, uh, Coach Wright was like, you, "I want you guys to have this in your repertoire, knowing that you guys can play the other way, but you will always have this style mm-hmm. of basketball." Mm-hmm. And then it works. Hell yeah, <laughs> it works. And then when when we won that my freshman year, Coach said this line with us. He's like, "Now that I know this shit works, and then y'all, it's gonna be hell for you guys next year." Yeah. So, all right, so we really gotta lock in. But yeah, he he. He really implemented that to us because we knew that sometimes people are going to be athletic, more athletic than we are, but like, it's about how smart we are, how mm-hmm. in our footwork Skilled and all that mindset. stuff. So he, yeah, he hammered that home every huh? day. How many pros was on that team? Four? 2016? Yeah. Me, Mikhail, yeah. Ryan Archidiakono, Josh Hart, uh, our big man Daniel Cheffy played in the league for a little wow. bit, um, who redshirted that year. Dante DiVincenzo. Yeah, DiVincenzo, yeah. Eric Pasco redshirted that year because he transferred. So six, six seven. seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's dope. Deep team. You guys get a chance to win another one, uh, 2018. So two time champ, also national player of the year. Mm. You knew it was time to go after that. Ching ching. Yeah. yeah I had no choice. <laughs> also, I, best part about it, my mom was like this. I graduated that year too. So oh, I, did finished, you? I finished in three. Three years? Finished in three. Damn. Finished That's in three. dope. But yeah, it was. That was the plan. Like I, we thought about it my sophomore year, but that's that's, that's uh, it's that's mom. That's work, man. I love mom. that. I can't I give that. dad. Dad said dad wanted me to do it, but mom was like, "Nah, on you. Yeah, Make yeah, sure yeah. you did it." Yeah, yeah. That was I, mom. I wonder how hard is that to graduate in three years? Yeah, I, it took me four, and I still didn't. Forty five, <laughs> and I even thought about it. Yeah, <laughs> that he crushed your mind. <laughs> what was your? I mean, obviously, graduation, national player of the year, two time NCAA champ. What was your draft process like? Did you have to do a bunch of workouts? Did you do a few? I did nine. Okay. I did nine workouts. Um, draft process was, it wasn't too bad. Obviously, like, nine workouts is a lot, like, the, with the travel and everything. But uh, a lot of people did more, so I couldn't really complain. Like, some people were doing, like, 20, 25. Mm. So I think I did a decent amount. Any memorable um, ones, like guys you went up against in the draft that were supposed to be higher or whatever it may be? Sometimes you hear those draft stories. I think, the, I think the one draft story that always comes to mind is when I did Utah and it was Grayson Allen was there. Grayson Allen got drafted off that workout. workout. Really? Yes. He got drafted to Utah off that workout. He dominated. Really? I couldn't be mad at it because I wasn't playing terrible. I think I, I was I think I was on his team too, the three on three uh team. Man, he was cooking. Like he got drafted off that workout alone. Like they knew it right away. So he, he's was, their type of player too, kind of Matt Harpering type. Matt Harpering was a problem. Mm-hmm. Oh, because I mean, I thought we started talking about Utah. I was about to say I'm out of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you get drafted with Luca. Got to be the. Uh, I wouldn't say the best draft ever, but close to it. What you, what you think about the draft class? My draft we class. Got, we, because I'm, I'm, I'm. It's Dylan, but this guy Dylan back here. He go. He's a big time basketball head, so he goes overboard with some of the things he says sometimes. The best draft ever, but I won't say I won't say ever. I would say if it's the best draft class ever because that dude's a Hall of Famer. I'll say that. That dude. It was. It's funny because I remember first meeting him. That language barrier was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. He can he can speak way better English now, but um. He he came in right away and like he just like. It looks so effortless. Like when my style, I'm like, I gotta come in every day, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta do this. Just to make sure that like they just see this man would just come in the gym, they do his work, and when he play pickup, it just looked like he's doing that slow motion, but he's doing whatever he wants. And I'm thinking of I play like my own pace, like I control the game, whatever, whatever, I do it a little differently, but his his is just on another level. Mm-hmm. So 
from day one, I was like, this dude is good. This dude is good. But like, also, I'm thinking like, like, damn, this dude is good. Do I belong? <laughs> like, that's no, that's how like the type of doubt that I put in my mind. Like, that's this how dude good is, he was. He was that good. Mm. He's, I can't even. You can ask any vet on that team. It was like DeAndre Jordan, Wes Matthews, Harrison Barnes, um, JJ Barea, Devin Harris. They all say the same thing. The, the dude just came in and everyone was just like, wow. Mm. And just. We That's see when it. We started. Yeah, we, we saw it. See it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't uh, who got drafted in bronze class? Him and Melo, right? Oh, I, I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm okay. saying okay. Of the Mavs personally getting him and Luca in the same draft. Okay. Uh, who, did, who had a better draft? Go, he, but, but you know, I'm Explain, Ron Burgundy. You didn't say that on the thing. Explain your shit. Explain, <laughs> he didn't write it on there though. Uh, who was Luca off the court? The kid. Big really? old kid. Like big all kid. of us. Yeah. Big kid. He was. He's a cool dude. Um. Uh, he really likes to just relax and kind of be out of the spotlight, mm -hmm. which I like about him. He's not like, he doesn't like the attention, um, down to earth, chill, just wants to hang out and all that stuff. He's, he's really low key. He's like. What's one of your favorite stories that you could tell about you and him or something that happened or practice, games, travel, any any funny stories with you two? Um, no 1v1s? I've been a couple of times. Yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> oh, for sure. And there's, there's yeah. evidence too. There's video evidence too. So yeah. uh, one, I had to throw that. I just had to throw that out there. Yeah, come on, man. Uh, some stories on me and Luca. I would say like the longer I was like able to be on the court uh, on the court with him, we gained much more respect. So our friendship grew like that. Mm. Of course. Like obviously, I wasn't playing as much until I obviously I got better and better each year, and so. Um, Man, we used to <laughs> we used to gamble on the plane, man. Mm. We used to gamble on the plane, play Tonk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I didn't play Blu-ray. I didn't play Blu-ray. So no, that's no, no, a whole no. different. That's ball a whole game. different ball game. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool. Blu-ray, cool. Have you so, so, oh, crying, I'm crying yeah, bro. We used to play. Used to play Tonk a little bit. So I'm obviously the lowest uh, paid player at the table, and so. Uh, but uh, the only thing about Luca, never pays his bets right away. <laughs> he still right probably owes some people. He still owes some people. Was DJ the dealer? Because DJ cheats. DJ oh, no, I stayed away from DJ. Uh, DJ was a fucking I didn't play card a, I didn't cheater. Play, I didn't play a freshman. I played like freshman. I didn't play a rookie year. I played like okay. closer to like my further. third and fourth year. Okay. Yeah. See, we didn't do that. You yeah. got to pay up or you get off the plane. We, they was writing checks on the plane. But also, like, it's for the Mavs. I remember, you know how you, you get like um, per, per DM? DM? Yeah. We got it on a debit card. Oh, really? So we never got cash. Oh, Some Mark Cuban shit right there. <laughs> oh, that's G. That's dope. <laughs> How was Dirk? You been around Dirk? Amazing. Unbelievable, huh? It was crazy because he's another dude who's just a big kid. Like all of, he's mm -hmm. a big kid. But I remember seeing him like just like fighting to like get back on the court because he had I think he had an ankle procedure right before my rookie year. So he was just fighting to get back. And I'm seeing how hard this dude is working at year twenty one, knowing that this probably his last year. So it made me think about like maybe just like five or six years ago, like what he was doing to like get himself ready to go. And so that that dude's work ethic in his mind at year twenty one just was off the charts. So obviously like he couldn't do the things he used to do, right. but mind's still sharp as ever. Yeah. yeah. For uh for me, he's probably the smartest coach and probably the first coach to well besides Pop, but the first coach to actually Believe in me to be um, a, a, a a star on the team. What did Rick Carlisle do for you, and and what type of coach was he to you? Rick is different. I love Rick. Yes, he's different, different. When I say different, man, he's just he's hilarious. Like the way, from from the way he calls timeouts to everything he does, he's just a quirky dude. But when it comes to basketball, man, he's just like genius, genius, genius. He was a, he was a great great dude. When I played, he let me go. Mm -hmm. When I go, he let me go. And so when I used to talk to him about like things I had to do, whatever, and like what, look, I was like, coach, like what I gotta do, yada yada yada. He just basically just go play, man. Just go play, be yourself. Uh, he, he told me to, he told me to limit my mid ranges, <laughs> but I was thinking if I make him, be good. Mm -hmm. Make him be good. But uh, he's it's a method he, behind everything he say though. He everything's calculated. He, 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 yeah, it's calculated. Everything's exactly. calculated. 
everything's calculated. He was a great, he was a great dude to play for. I loved it. He's the only coach, Matt, that I played for in 14 years. That at the beginning of the season, he bring each player, the starting five, he bring each player in before the season and tell them what he wants them to do. So you know your role. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you're not going out there stepping on nobody's toes or you're doing what's best for the team. And when the coach does that, it simplifies, he simplifies it for players where they can understand what he need them to do. He's the mm -hmm. only coach to do ever done that. And I think all coaches should do that with players. He's He's definitely straightforward, yes. which I love. Whether it was whether you liked it or not. Yep. There yeah, it is. Ain't no guesswork. Knicks, free agency. Uh was there a chance in Dallas? The the, the bright lights in New York were calling your name. Talk to us about your free agency. There was a chance. Okay. There's a chance. I I really did want to stay in Dallas. I think before the season, um before my fourth season in Dallas, my last season in Dallas, uh, we try to extend um, our contract, whatever we can get, was like, the most we can get was like four years and fifty-five million, and so obviously we wanted to do that. I wanted to stay there. I thought I thought I would be there for a long time, and uh, I liked my role there. Um, it's funny because my agent was like, "I mean, you can do so much. You can do. You can get more. You can get more." I'm saying like, "Well, like I just I want to be safe. Like, I'm not trying to gamble right now. This is not something mm -hmm. you really gamble with if it's out there." Right. And so, but they they were like, we want to see where we're at, you know, about like 20, 25 games into the season. But we were like, all right, well, if we're not going to do it, I kind of don't want to do it until after the season. I'm not trying to think about this. During the season, right. Yeah, so there's a period where Luca went out and I started to start. And um, I was playing really well. I think I was averaging like 20 and like six maybe, whatever. And so it was about that 20 to 25 mark. And so we went back, we're like, hey, like, if the deal's there, we're thinking about it. Like, I'll do it. Like, right now, and still, it was no. Like, it, was, it wasn't a hard no. It was just like, we want to see, we want to see. So, I'm so like, this was Dallas. This is Dallas. Uh, this is still in Dallas. Because okay. I, I originally, I wanted to stay there. Mm -hmm. And so um, trade deadline comes. I'm like thinking, like, all right, well, if, the, if I'm not getting extended, I'm probably going to get traded. Probably. I think the way I've been playing, like, there's just like. Playing well, right. I'm playing somewhat decent. And so that didn't happen. And then. um. Yeah, so like the the deal came on the table after the trade deadline. I was like, I, I no, I think I think I've outgrown that now. Right. Okay. Personally, that's what I thought. I was like, I think I've outgrown that. Obviously, going to playoffs, Luke gets hurt like second to last game, or last game of the season, and so we're he's out for the first three games, and I obviously did what I did. Ain't no looking back. Ain't no looking back. And so that all happens. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of my timeline so I don't mess up. So they'd be losing the Western Conference Finals. And I remember seeing something on Twitter after the game, and it was like Mark saying, hey, like we can pay him the most money. And so he says that on Twitter. He says that like in the in an interview, like oh, season, whatever, yeah. mm -hmm. whatever, like literally right after the game. And so I'm thinking like, all right, I'm okay. I just, I just, after that, it was like crickets. Mm. From my point of view, I can't speak to anyone else. I mean, just from my point of view, it was crickets. Mm -hmm. And so, and obviously I saw like New York making moves and saw all that stuff. I was like- Home. Close to home. Close to home. Two hours away from where I was, or an hour away from where I was born. Yeah. Um, parents live on the East Coast, whole families on the East Coast. So I started thinking like, yeah, I could, this, this could be a real thing. And so um, then here we are. Best move you made. <laughs> Best move. Best what's, move. What's the experience been like with Tibbs? Old school, tough nose? Tibbs, I will say me and Tibbs' his relationship is different because here's the backstory. My dad went to Salem High School in Salem, Massachusetts. Tibbs went to Salem State. So that's how they met when my dad was in high school. So that relationship started there. And so they had played pickup and all that stuff. They knew each other from just being in the area. So that relationship started there. And then my dad- that. That's crazy. With the, was with the Knicks when Tibbs was assistant coach when they went to the finals. Mm -hmm. And so obviously the relationships continued to grow and never. And then my dad also coached with Tibbs and the Bulls. So that's why I moved to Chicago. Mm -hmm. And then he was with the Timberwolves with Tibbs. So I've known Tibbs pretty much since life. I can, yeah, mm -hmm. my whole life. So when I got to here, this dude pushes me the same way I saw him push any other player. Um, doesn't really give me special treatment. Like he'll still, like he'll yell at me. Like he'll yell at me like, I could have a wide open shot in the corner. He's gonna yell at me for something. 
So like it ain't it ain't like it's no like peripheral or special treatment at all. He just he pushes me every single day. He wants me the best player I can be every single day. And mm -hmm. I like people say that he does he it. He it. lives it. This man was in the gym, is in the facility yesterday after our last game, uh, giving me a call at 10 a.m. Like <laughs> just like talking about basketball, what I thought about the game last night. I was like, Coach, I haven't watched it. Like, I'm, I'm getting I'm packing. I'm going to All Star. He's like, all right, well, this is what I think. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. He's always pushing me that way. So, I mean, our relationship is different just because I've known him for so long. But I mean, I love that man. What was your Team USA experience like? And losing at the same time. I'll say this. My Team USA experience was great. For me and all the team, my, uh, the guys, going to all these special places, uh, Spain, Abu Dhabi, the Philippines. As soon as we lost, right, and we were done, I forgot about everything that just happened. So it, it went like it was that whole trip just didn't happen. Mm. That's what it felt in my mind. Like I was like, because you I was didn't pissed. win. We didn't win. So everyone was like, oh my God, how was your trip? How, when I got back, I'm like, it sucked. Right. Like we lost. Like he said, like, oh, but you went to like Spain, you did all this stuff. I'm like, that doesn't matter. Like, mm -hmm. you went to win. I wasn't like on vacation. I wasn't on vacation or nothing. Like, I was just like, the whole trip was ruined for me as soon as we lost. Mm -hmm. Old school. It's just, that's just, feel it. It's just real. I think he's going to get an NBA title, though, because he's been one of, I think he's just one of those guys like me that just wins everywhere. He's going to get it. I think he's one of those people. I, I hope. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I think so. get it. Are you hoping to be on the next Olympic team, 2024? I mean, I, Paris? I, I, I couldn't say no, unless obviously it was something was to happen or whatever, mm -hmm. special circumstance. Um, I'm always open to it. I'm always over to it. That's just opportunity that doesn't come too often. Right. Congratulations on the pod. Me and Matt waiting for uh, an invite. The roommate, the roommate show with you and Josh Hart. Talk about the pod. How did that come about? The pod's fun. The pod's fun. The best part about the pod right now, not the best part, the worst part about the pod right now. Uh, <laughs> so we, the first two shows I've aired, uh, we, we did it before our last losing, our losing streak. So everyone's like, oh, 0 and 1 since the pod started. 0 and 2 since the pod started. 0 and 3, 0 and 4. Get rid of the pod. I said, yo, we haven't recorded since you right. know, in a minute. But um, I love it because like, obviously everyone sees uh, the players um, on the court and obviously in the interviews and they're asking like basketball questions or whatever. Like, yeah, me and Josh are going to talk about basketball, but like, we were talking about like our, our relationship yeah. and how we met and stuff, all the old stuff to get us where we are. Oh, shit. Yeah, just the conversation. Um, yeah, like, we just want to talk. Like, people don't see uh, NBA players talk about what's going on when they're playing the NBA. In real time. In real time. And so, I mean, obviously, it's like it's, it's second fiddle to what we're doing. Like, we're, we're, hoop, we're hooping right now. But, um, man, it's fun. I'm excited. And for sure, yeah. yo, yo, we'll set that up. Yeah, I need it's therapeutic, down. too. It's we therapeutic. Down. We're definitely down to come through. Yeah. Um, how did your partnership with Bose come about? They came to me, man. They came to me. I'm not gonna lie. I I think Bose surprised me because I, I was a I was an Apple kid my entire life. I, everyone's like Apple, Apple. And um, when Bose came to me, I put them on. That noise cancellation shit is real. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> it's Word. real. No, no, no. I like Word. it is real. Like you put the earbud the ear earbuds in and on the plane. I don't hear nothing. nothing. Yeah, nothing. Man, yeah. I love it. That's dope. Love Shout it. out to Bose because they laced us with some stuff for our yep. gift bag. Yes, so they did. Appreciate we're it. Definitely gonna hear about those, but we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, I want to real quick before I, we're heading in the, uh, the 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 quick hitters to finish out the show, but I just want to know real quick what has it been like playing with your college teammates in New York of all places? Obviously, Dante's been playing really well. You're doing your thing. Josh got paid, like, what is that like to kind of obviously have the college experience, but then have it like this on the biggest stage in New York? Man, it's it's fun, man. It's fun. New York is, the Garden is a special place. So we used to play there. I probably played in the Garden in college about 16 times. Damn. Yeah, the Big East Tournament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whenever we played St. John's, we played them at the Garden. We had a couple um, like neutral site games at the Garden. So. I was like 15 and one at the garden. Oh. I was like 15 and one or something like that. We lost one game, it was a, to Seton Hall, my freshman year in the Big East Championship. I remember that, we'll never forget that. Um, but playing with those three, like especially in the place that we used to play in a lot, oh, and it's oh. awesome. 
Uh, you don't like people talk about like uh you, you get these opportunities like this and it's something you should really like cherish like man like playing with your boys we used to like go at it with every single day in practice like i said practices were hard in the games in college yeah mm -hmm. so we used to like battle it for me and josh got into a couple altercations Jonte and josh got to way more stuff because they used to guard each other and like go at mm -hmm. it but uh to see where we are now like how we've all like matured like not just with basketball but with life man it's it's crazy, man. Mm. It's unbelievable. It's a blessing, man. Enjoy yeah. it. Enjoy it. Yeah. All right. Uh, quick hitters. First team to come to mind. Give us your thoughts. Uh, top five point guards in NBA history. Magic. I'm not going to order. Magic. Steph. Um, Steve Nash. He'd kill me if I didn't say it. Jason Kidd. You better. Uh, I'm going to go with my guy, too, CP. Ooh. CP. Shout out CP. That's my dog. Did you have a childhood crush? Who was your childhood crush? Beyonce. It's easy. Word, word. Beyonce. Word. Easy call. Beyonce. Third Ward, Texas. <laughs> uh, most underrated food spot in New York. Underrated? Mm hmm I always do the overrated places. Underrated. Or maybe maybe one of your favorite low-key spots. It's a little it's a little Italian spot underground. It's called Scalantonella. Scalanton Ellen? Scalantonella. Scalantonella. Did I say that right? Close enough. <laughs> Real Close Italian. Enough. I'm talking Real like authentic, authentic Italian. Scantinelli? Yeah, I authentic love that. Italians. Yeah. I love it. Okay. So, um, what's your guilty pleasure? It's crazy. Whenever I can't keep them in the house, Oreos. <sighs> double Oreos. stuffed? Regular. Oh, double stuffed to crack. You, I, need I, to, you I, need I, to get your game right. Get your double stuffed. Cannot stuff. keep them in the house. One time my, my wife brought them into the house and she tried to hide them from me. Oh, I was dang. looking for something else and I saw them. I closed the door back. I was like, damn, man, I, I know where these are now. <laughs> I couldn't sleep in the middle of the night. I'm like, I need <laughs> <Damn>. a snack. <laughs> like, like a fiend, huh? Yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah. with or without milk? Um, either or. doesn't matter to me. Have you experienced the Delta Biscoffs on never, Delta? Never heard of them. The Biscoff? My goodness. <laughs> you got to fly Delta just for the cookies. <laughs> That's the reason? Yep. Uh, one thing you wish you were better at? Golf. Oh, I like that. Golf and video games. What video game you play? I play Call of Duty, I play Fortnite. Yeah. I would say. NCAA 2024 is going to come out, college I football. Wait I can't wait. I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. I'll, I'll say that because, I'll say video games because um, you know, my, my boys be clowning me, man. I'm always on the one, first one dying, whatever, whatever. <laughs> Every day is like, I'll be playing well too, and I die, but yo, here we go again. I'm like, bro, I, I'm playing well today. Uh, like, you're the weakest link. Weakest link. Yeah, I'm, all, I'm always the weakest, weakest link. link. I ain't you tripping. I do it in real life. Um, <laughs> one, <laughs> one guess you would like to see on All the Smoke. But? But you have to help us get your answer on the show. Well, somebody one you're guess. close with. Yeah, somebody yeah. you're cool with in the, that Rolodex of yours. Josh would be the easy answer. So I'm not going to say that. I want to. I got. I just want to talk to him though, because he seemed funny as hell. He has no filter. I know. He's. I can. Like, I can tell. Like sometimes on our show, he starts talking. I'm like, this dude just, just Josh is toning down a little bit. He's like, no, no, no. I got. I got to do it. I'm like, all right. But uh, he's he's like cool dude. Actually, you gotta be him, man. He's he's unhinged. Yeah. He don't care. Yeah. He don't That's care. This would be a great place for Josh. Like he got a little bit of me in him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, uh, Jay the man, we appreciate you stopping by. Yes, sir. Uh, best of luck in the three point contest. Appreciate it. Enjoy yourself Appreciate in the All Star Congrats. game, and then continue to push it, man. I mean, uh, like I said, I I feel like you guys have something special out there. Continue to build on that, and uh, best of luck on your run to the playoffs, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate no it. Thank you guys. for being there, bro. Yes, That's a wrap, man. Jay the Brunson, All Star, twenty twenty four, Indiana. We'll see y'all next week.